mid-October in the Rocky Mountains. And BYU still climbing the hills of independence. Down in the valley, it's Georgia Tech in town on homecoming Saturday on BYU TV. for football in Provo, Utah. We welcome you to Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It's the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in town to take on the BYU Cougars. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave McCann with BYU Hall of Fame quarterback Gary Scheide. Joining us here in the booth on a day where we've got one of the nation's best rushing teams against one of the nation's best rushing defenses. Yeah, well, that's what makes it exciting, Dave, because Tech is number 20 in the nation defensively. But last year, BYU ran up 41 points against them, beat them 41 to 17. And they want to get back this year and maybe have a little revenge here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Let's take a look at the impact players we'll keep an eye on tonight. Vad Lee and David Sims for Georgia Tech, Taysom Hill and Mitch Matthews. They combined for three touchdowns last week up in Logan against Utah State. For Lee and Sims, they're going to run the ball a whole lot tonight. David Sims has done it uh, the, every, ever since he's been there at Georgia Tech. 600 years of sophomore yards, 600 yards his junior season, and he ranks third in the ACC in scoring. And the odd thing is, Dave, he was recruited to Tech as a quarterback, so he's a triple threat. Speaking of quarterbacks, Taysom Hill noticeably getting better and more comfortable. How big of a week was it last week to win on the road at Utah State? Well, I think the really big thing is Taysom threw for 278 yards, and the rushing's been averaging 278 yards, so if they can combine that passing with the rushing, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense, and Mitch Matthews was his primary target at three touchdowns and five catches. And what a target at 6-6, Mitch Matthews. Game preparations presented by Emergency Essentials for your family's food and water storage needs. For Emergency Essentials, be unprepared or beprepared.com, Georgia Tech. Well, defense needs to limit an average of five yards per play. Last week against Miami, they gave up 10 yards, way too much, too many points, and they need to control the clock. Against Miami, they had it 14 of the first 15 minutes. And so if they can do that against BYU, they'll keep their offense off the field. And BYU, on the other hand, they need to get a balanced offense. Last week, they showed that they could throw the ball. They proved they're one of the top teams in the country in running it. And they need to, to also be sound assignment on defense, which means that the, 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 the nose guard, I think, Manu Manu Lula, has to be the key to stopping the dive. They can stop the dive, and then they can force them into only two options. Georgia Tech coach Paul Johnson's been here before, was an assistant coach at the University of Hawaii back during the Ty Detmer era for BYU. He's in his sixth season at Georgia Tech with 43 wins. Bronco Mendenhall in season number nine at BYU looking for career win number 78. Georgia Tech won the toss and they opted to defer to the second half. The opening kick is sponsored by Maverick. Maverick's Adventure Club tracks account information via their mobile app and by text or email. Learn more at maverick.com. Maverick Adventures first stop. Adam Hine is back for BYU after missing last week with a concussion. He's number two in the country returning kicks. He and Paul Lasique await the offering from Harrison Butker, a freshman out of Decatur, Georgia, and we're underway. And this is Hine, and he'll let it bounce out of the end zone. So the Cougars will start it first and 10 from their 25-yard line. BYU in at 3-2 and two on the year. Yellow Jackets also 3-2. and two. Taysom Hill. Four touchdown passes on the season, three of them last week to Mitch Matthews. Hill, a sophomore, number 15 in the country in rushing. And on first down from the 25, play action. J.D. Foslove with his 10th grab of the year, and BYU is on the move. It's a gain of 11. That's just a simple play action fake, faking the little zone read, and sending Foslove on a 10-yard curl straight up the middle. Hill to throw it again. Cody Hoffman. Spins to the 45, a gain of nine. And it'll be second down and a yard for Hoffman. 36 games now with a catch. And he is closing in on a number of records. Needs five more to become the all-time receptions leader at BYU. We'll chart that 
as we move through the night. First penalty of the game is going to cost the Cougars five Full yards. Snap. False start. Number 55. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Freshman Brayton Kersley with the penalty. No Brock Stringham tonight at right tackle for BYU. Out with a bad shoulder. So it is Kersley, Matthews, Kafu, and Yek. On second down, false love around the corner. He's got first down yardage out near midfield. What a year. A game for J.D. last year against Georgia Tech. 129 return yards, really the difference maker as BYU won the field position battle. And then Jamal Williams with a three touchdown performance against Georgia Tech a year ago in Atlanta. Taysom Hill, Cody Hoffman again to the 39. DJ White on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. A 12-yard completion. Well, for the first time in a while, Hoffman is available. And you can see they're going to him on short routes, false live on short routes. They're trying to get Taysom some confidence early in his throwing. Jamal Williams fights to get back to the line of scrimmage, may have lost a yard. Talk about Williams from a year ago at 107 yards rushing and three touchdowns. He also caught a touchdown that gives him four in the Georgia Tech game. And he leaves. Saw limited action last week coming back from that concussion. Over the right side is Adam Hine. Back from a concussion as we mentioned. And he takes it to the 36. BYU needs to get to the 29. For a first down, Jabari Hunt days on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. Another penalty. The Yellow Jackets appoint at the Cougars. Before the snap, false start, 73. Five-yard penalty remains third down. That's Salamone Kafu, second penalty on BYU on this opening drive. Jason Hill. Getting after his center. Third down now and 12. Hill up in the pocket and nowhere to go. And the Yellow Jacket defense will force a BYU punt. Adam Gotsis in to make the tackle. And Paul Johnson will get the football. That time they were looking for Mahini, the tight end, deep over the middle. And he was covered pretty well, so Taysen tried to come off to a secondary receiver, and he was covered too. That's why he tried to scramble, but they had everybody covered on that route. Scott Arlano in to kick it away. DeAndre Smelter at the 10-yard line, waiting for it. Arlano's had a very effective year punting the football. Not his best offering here. And they'll spot the ball at the 22, and that's where Georgia Tech will get it. Just a 22-yard punt for Arlano, his worst of the season. Our sports report tonight is brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen. Talk about some of the bodies banged up and not in action. And uh, Aletto, who has been the starting center, is out. Stringham also on that offensive line is out. Gary, BYU's had a makeshift offensive line in just about every game. Well, Taysom Hill said, I don't really know uh, at different times who's going to be out in front of me, but at the end of the day, I know they're going to do what they can to protect me, and that's all you can really ask. So, you know, you have to live with it. False start, number 53. Five-yard penalty, still first down. These teams are in a hurry. That's the third false start here in the first quarter. Brian Chamberlain, the youngest on that Georgia Tech offensive line with the early movement. Now it's first down and 15 as we look at Badley out of Durham, North Carolina. Very athletic quarterback on the pitch. Cougars are waiting for it. And it's Jorgensen on the stop. Georgia Tech will put the ball in the hands of David Sims, Robert Godhai, and Deion Hill a whole lot. And this, the pitch, and the first carry for Sinjin Days. And he's hit for a loss of yards. When you get an offside penalty or procedure penalty as an option team, it hurts you a lot more than a passing team because you usually get four yards, four yards, three yards, and all of a sudden you have a first down. Last year when Tech played BYU, they were 0 for 10 in third downs, mainly because they were breaking down at least once in every possession. 
And Lee threw just seven times last year. Taken off. Gets the penalty yards back. And another yard to boot. It'll bring up third down and nine. Waniunga on the tackle. BYU's leader with 46 tackles. A gain of six. On third down last year in this matchup, Georgia Tech went 0 for 10. Here's their first third down tonight. This will be a very telling play. And also, Dave, look at the yardage. This is almost 10 yards, and that's where it's difficult for Tech to convert. If they're two, three, four yards, they've got a lot better chance, and Mendenhall is going to call a timeout. BYU wants to get the right personnel on the field, so they take a timeout on third down and nine. 30 second timeout. Let's check in with Kathy Aiken down on the field. Kathy? Yeah, Dave, as we're watching the Georgia Tech offense, head coach Paul Johnson runs this triple option so well. He knows it so well that he's actually his team's offensive coordinator as well. He doesn't use a script. All he does is he waits for the defense to line up to see what they're going to play. Then he shuttles players in with each play call. Not the fancy signs that BYU uses. It's basically more old school. And by the way, you talked earlier about him being at Hawaii. He was there the day that Hawaii beat uh, BYU when Ty Detmer won the Heisman Trophy Day. I was there, too, uh, as we announced that game, and it was a big night for Hawaii and a bad night for Ty Detmer. Third down and nine after the timeout. <laughs> Lee looking around and now on the run. Man behind the defense, incomplete. You see the athletic ability of Lee to get around, but throwing the football is not his strength. And Georgia Tech will punt it on fourth down and nine. If you look at the protection, you can't knock the line for that. He had almost nine seconds to throw. But when you're running your route, the general rule is this. If you run a short route, you go deep. If you run a deep route, you come short. And Tech's receivers did not do much of a good job to help the quarterback that time in their adjustment on his rollout. Ball should have been caught by David Sims. Sean Poole in to punt it away, a senior out of Tallahassee, Florida. And J.D. Foslev is deep. Bad snap. Nice scoop by Poole. And a Georgia Tech roll. Near disaster for the Yellow Jackets. It'll be BYU ball at the 38-yard line, a 39-yard punt. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by Five Hour Energy. Just a beautiful setting here on the campus of BYU in Provo, Utah. No score. Each team has had one possession. Alongside Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Matvick. Don Davenport is down on the field, and it's a change of culture offensively here at BYU that they're going through with a new offensive coordinator, a complete new offensive staff. This play's known for throwing the ball through the years, but it's a run-first offense right now. Which is different. You know, BYU is an offense that's inspired other offenses, like the air raid, like the run and shoot, that have borrowed principles from the Lavelle Edwards years. Robert Anai has come back. He's been the offensive coordinator before, went to Arizona for two years, and brought that fast-paced, run-oriented offense with him. After the 12-yard pickup by Jamal Williams on the ground, he makes a catch here this time. And it's going to bring up second down and about five. And we'll keeping an eye on that snap how fast BYU gets up to the line and snaps the ball. They like to do it about 18, 19 seconds in between plays. Taysom Hill, time to throw deep downfield, has a man, what a play! Did he hang on? Yeah, Cody Hoffman. Penalty flags down, Hoffman hauls it in over his head for a touchdown. It is a change of culture that's going on here at BYU, but they still like to sling it, too. Pass interference, defense. Ooh. 
Penalty is declined. Touchdown. Yep. It's going to stand. It's a touchdown for BYU. Cody Hoffman. 45-yard touchdown pass on the third play of the drive. A penalty flag down on the extra point. There's no play. The previous play was a scoring play, a touchdown. That previous play is under further review. Now they're going to take a look at it. I think what they're looking at is was Hoffman down before the ball crosses the goal line. Oh, you know, to me, it looks like six points. What concentration. You know, from that angle, it's difficult to tell as he's possessing the football and as his knee is coming down, is he possessing the football across the goal line? See his knee down there. There it looks like a touchdown. It looks to me from this angle that we have that it looks like a touchdown to me. And keep in mind, it has to be indisputable video evidence for the replay boot to overturn what is a called touchdown on the field. It's an ACC officiating crew. The Big 12 is up in the replay booth. Judson Howard is the replay official tonight. They're seeing the same look you're seeing at home. Right there. I mean, you, you can see it. To me, when you see as, as he continues into the end zone, he's so deep into the end zone by the time he completes this catch, it almost implies bam. That, to me, it looks like with his knee and where the ball is, you know, in comparison to the goal line. And remember, it just has to penetrate that first front edge of the goal line. It doesn't have to be completely into the end zone. I think the officials on the field got it right. And to your point, Clay, here we are talking about BYU, and they're going to run the football, and they're 60-40. But Taysom Hill last week, he showed some touch on right. several passes on some deep balls. You know, they were standing wide open. It was the Mitch Matthews show last week, but already here today, Cody Hoffman, who is assaulting their record books for a receiver, is showing out in this passing game. Nice connection, the spirit to honor for what looks to be a touchdown. And here comes the response from the booth. After review, the ruling on the field stands, touchdown. Cody Hoffman with his 29th career touchdown. And Taysom Hill, his fifth touchdown pass of the year, and it's going to make highlights at the end of the season. I'll tell you what, part of this, too, we talked about the turbulence that BYU has had up front with their offensive line. Well, Cody Hoffman's missed a couple of ball games this year. That certainly doesn't help when you're implementing a new offense, a run-oriented, hyperactive offense at that when you've got your top receiver on the line. Justin Sorensen attacks on the extra point. What a catch from Cody Hoffman, a three-play, 62-yard drive in a half minute. 7-0 Cougars. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by New Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. Available for a limited time. Get yours now. Some great faces, some great names from a couple of once proud programs trying to get back into national prominence. BYU and Georgia Tech. Steve Young, of course, in the BYU Hall of Fame here. Cougars lead it 7-0. Hamilton and Johnson. Georgia Tech, some great names, too. Again, Georgia Tech was embarrassed on homecoming in Atlanta last year by these BYU Cougars, trying to return the favor here tonight, but they're already down a touchdown. Justin Sorensen kicks it off. Lynn Griffin taking a knee, and there's a penalty flag down. Let's go back to last year. Jamal Williams and BYU had a great day. There's Riley Nelson, the quarterback. 41-17 the final. Jamal Williams had four touchdowns in the game. Georgia Tech was 0 for 10 on third down. They're already 0 for 1 tonight. BYU held the Yellow Jackets to just 117 yards rushing. That's 222 below their average going into the game. Yeah. 
offside on BYU. So Georgia Tech's going to start from the 30-yard line. Five-yard penalty against the Yellow Jackets. They're going to try and get something going here offensively. The B-back, David Sims, coming off a two-touchdown game in the loss at Miami. He's one of our impact players, presented by Lee Jeans. You see David Sims and Vad Lee figure very prominently in this rushing attack for Georgia Tech. Vad Lee most prominently, really, on the third downs. David Sims gets few touches there. And Kyle Van Noy and Ethan Manu Maliuna are the key players for them as well. Manu, Manu Maliuna probably more so than Van Noy at his nose tackle position. A lot of flags early going here. It's the only way the play clock is going to stop. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second out. Again, attention to detail has been killing Georgia Tech the last couple of weeks. And the two straight losses to Virginia Tech and Miami, that was the case. That's already the fifth penalty in this game. Combined. Second down and eight now for Georgia Tech. Zach Lasky, who led the team in rushing last year. No gain is that BYU defense. 24th in the country this season, allowing 336 yards per game. Well, BYU does an excellent job, not only against the run, but getting teams off the football field. Part of the reason why they can run 90-plus plays is they get three downs and out. Georgia Tech in their first possession. Three downs, and they're off the football field. Bronco Mendenhall calls the defensive coordination. He handles the plays for the defensive side of the ball. He's excellent versus the option offense. Lee has been struggling throwing the last couple of games, going deep here. Has a man, and it's caught. Michael Summers, the redshirt freshman, hauls it in, and there is a marker down. Down inside the 20. It's a 49-yard hookup. We'll see if it's going to stand up. Pass interference, defense. That penalty will be declined. Results of the play is the completed catch. First down. First Georgia Tech first down today. And a huge one at that. I mean, it's, we saw some of those Georgia Tech greats. It's like Calvin Johnson running underneath a, a Joe Hamilton pass. Bad Lee not known for his arm necessarily. But Georgia Tech does a great job of getting big yardage when they do hit completions. Lee sprinting out, options it out to Deion Hill. Good run inside the 10-yard line. There you see the difficulty of facing Georgia Tech's offense. You know, there's a lot of misdirection, a great deal of ball handling. And there, when you see the Georgia Tech, the Van Noy's at the top of your screen. You see him, he's caught in no man's land. You got to play the quarterback, but it's hard to play both the quarterback and the pitch man. As incredibly talented as Van Noy is, he can only be in one place at one time. The All-American coming back for his senior year. They keep it on the ground. Lasky, the backup B back to David Sims, picks up six. So second down and goal to go from inside the five. A big hitting play. Rocking BYU back on their heels. They had them in a third and long. And with that shot that they hit over the top, Robertson Daniel unable to defend the pass. And then you see Georgia Tech. And when they get into short yardage situations, whether it's a goal to go or to convert a first down, incredibly difficult to defend this offense. Lee keeps it and walks in untouched. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. With this offense, it starts and stops with the quarterback. And they've had difficulty running the option after the Virginia Tech game. Coach Paul Johnson said, we're just not very good at the option right now. Last week, we put up about 330 yards on the ground. It wasn't enough versus Miami. And then here tonight, we see two rushing offenses. Taysom Hill hitting a big touchdown strike in the air. And then Bad Lee on a third down conversion, their first of the evening, to set up this touchdown score. For the tie, Butker. And it's seven apiece. You 
you'll see just the play fake right there. It makes you want to bite inside just enough on the dive. Bad Lee can see there's an opening right at the end of the line of scrimmage, and he slides right down his offensive lineman's back into the end zone untouched. That's the real challenge when you're facing this offense. You got to get off box, run to the football. Hard to do and very little margin for error when you're playing on a two-yard football field. A 49-yard hookup with Summers on third down was the key of that drive, no doubt. And now the Georgia Tech defense is going to have to show us something. Defensive coordinator Ted Roof shook things up this week. A lot of changes. Tackling a big concern in the game last week against Miami. 20 missed tackles for over 200 yards after contact. Uh, that's something that obviously you can't have versus anybody's offense. But certainly one where the quarterback's a running threat. And one that can get out on the edge like Taysom Hill, that's even more concerning. Hine is going to bring it out from about three yards deep. Here comes Adam Hine. Harrison Butker, the kicker, brings him down. Good field position. It's a return of 39 yards for Adam Hine. Let's go down to Don. Guys, looking at this Georgia Tech defense, they'll have their hands full. BYU, one of the fastest offenses in the country. They run a play every 19 seconds. You couple that with the fact that this stadium sits at 4,600 feet above sea level. That's going to make fatigue set in a lot faster. And then this defense decimated by injuries. Ted Roof said they've got to get off the field fast and early to be successful. I think you, Don. Hill is complete on first down. It's going to be a pickup of seven yards for Skyler Ridley. And you can see the changes from last week for this Georgia Tech secondary. And part of those changes involve the cornerback position. We saw Lewis Young get beaten deep on the previous touchdown catch by Hoffman. That was Jamia Thomas's position, who's been moved to safety for this game. It's going to be close to a first down for Jamal Williams. Should get a full workload tonight. Second game back from that concussion. They've been worried about him the last week or 10 days, but they feel he should be able to get a full workload tonight. It's a pickup of four and a first down. Not near midfield. Williams again finds a crease. First down and more inside the 40 and close to the 35-yard line. It's a run of 15 yards for Jamal Williams, the sophomore out of California. He's one of our impact players tonight, brought to us by Lee Jeans. Well, we've hit on Taysom Hill more in the passing game than in the ground, and Jamal Williams establishing himself. Hill, six for six passing, looking to throw again toward the end zone. In the corner, Ross Oppo interfered with. Lewis Young in coverage from his cornerback spot, and it looks like he's going to be called for the pass interference. Pass interference. Defense, number eight, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Once again, that's Lewis Young. This time, he's got his hands on the face mask, hand on contact with Oppo all the way. Oppo is a huge target, a big physical one at that. And you can see, again, this is the field corner position, one that was previously held by Jamia Thomas. So a 15-yard penalty, spots it at the 20. Go back to work, Adam Hine, who did not play last week because of concussion symptoms following the Middle Tennessee game. Picks up about five seconds down at five. And there's Jeremiah Atauchu coming off that edge for Georgia Tech, one of the best in the ACC at defensive end. Caught by Falslev, and he's inside the five yard line. First down, goal to go after the 13 yard catch. Right now, this BYU offense basically having its way. And you can see Robert and I's offensive play calling where you know, the world's his oyster. He's running play action. He's throwing the ball deep. And he steps the ground game. Touchdown, Jamal Williams. What a drive for BYU.
Six plays, 61 yards in a minute 43. And Taysom Hill hasn't missed a pass yet. Sorensen makes it 14 to 7. For a guy who was worried about only completing about a third of his passes, back on a record-setting day versus Texas, Taysom Hill pacing this offense for BYU. They're getting it done on the ground and on the arm of their quarterback. And BYU is up a score on Georgia Tech. More college football later tonight on ESPNU. Beavers and the Cougars in the Pac-12 college football primetime. Presented by Five Hour Energy, Oregon State, Washington State tonight at 10.30. Also live on Watch ESPN. Look at passing quarterbacks in that game. Mannion for Oregon State, Halliday for Washington State. Here in Provo, 14-7 BYU. And change of culture that we talked about for the BYU offense. Going toward a more running style. Taysom Hill hasn't missed a pass yet. He's already over 100 yards passing. A year ago, they were about 50-50 run to pass. We've already seen BYU building on the confidence, I think, that was established last week in their passing game versus Utah State. Game trends, and Georgia Tech ready to get it for the third time. Scored a touchdown drive. Anything standing out so far? Well, you know, really, if it weren't for that big completion to Michael Summers, this Georgia Tech offense has been stymied by BYU defensively. They've done a good job of slowing down the ground game. They hit the big pass. They're able to get down in the red zone and punch it in. But so far, offensively, BYU doing an excellent job. And on the defensive side of the ball, you know, other than the big play, doing a good job slowing down Georgia Tech on the ground. snap false start 53 five yard penalty still first out third false start on georgia tech already today i don't think that's two on chamberlain you see he's just early you want to get off the football you got to give your quarterback enough room to operate this option you know if you don't get any movement and Bad Lee is so close to the line of scrimmage as he's working down off the dive, the midline option, down the line. You make your quarterback bubble. That's almost like forcing a tackle for loss. It goes to win with the playoff. Georgia Tech behind the chains on first and 15. The lead keeps. And Remington Peck makes the tackle. And spread option is really hard to prepare for. But when you talk to Bronco Mendenhall, he relishes playing against the triple option. Pretty used to it, too, those years that they took on Air Force in the Mountain West and, of course, playing Georgia Tech last year in Atlanta. Uh, and it, I think it's born of he was scarred his first game versus the option versus Air Force, and they hung 50-plus points on him. We don't want that to ever happen again. We a five-step drop. Now pressured and set by Kyle Van Orn. He is expected to be an early rounder in the draft in April and BYU is happy he came back for his senior year you see Van Noy was off the football outside linebacker position unaccounted for and when Vadley dropped for the pass he had a green light no coverage assignment rushed the passer he wasn't coming right away and as soon as he saw it if you don't have a guy to account for Kyle Van Noy He's going to get your quarterback on the ground, no matter how mobile he is. NFL scouts salivating over him. It forces a third and 17. Lee keeps it. Has a lot of running room. And he got a first down. His helmet comes off. He'll have to leave the field for a play, but gets out to the 36-yard line. He needed 17 for the first. He got 18 before Blake Morgan brought him down. Kyle Van Noy, you can see him upfield, turning Bad Lee back inside, but there's nobody there to help in time anyway. Nice block downfield to spring Bad Lee to get up, pick up the yardage needed. And bring it Justin Thomas, the redshirt freshman quarterback for Georgia Tech, for at least one play. Hands it off to Sims, and he's bulldozed back. Austin Jorgensen, the middle linebacker, leading the charge. 
And it's a short pickup. Well, part of that, too, we talked about our impact players. Ethan Mani Maliuna, he's doing a great job on the inside, taking away the inside run and forcing Georgia Tech to work the ball to the perimeter. They've hit one inside run successfully. Don't be surprised if they move big number 55 around their line of scrimmage on the defensive front. Van Noy almost tackled the ball carry in the backfield. Godhai got away from him and turned something positive out of what looked like a loss. It's a gain of four. Van Noy, once again, unaccounted for, slices right into the offensive backfield. I just talked about what a sure tackler he is. Godhigh does an excellent job of just sliding right off of that attempted tackle to get some positive yardage. Part of the reason why BYU was so successful a year ago, 0-10 versus Georgia Tech in conversions, was they kept them to third and long situations. Third and seven was the average a year ago. This is well within their operating comfort zone with a third and three. Option pitch to perfection. Godhigh picks up the first down. Godhigh, the former walk-on, gets four. They'll move the change. Chains and 54% this season on third down, eighth best in the NCAA. Tonight, certainly ahead of last year's pace, they didn't pick up one. Yeah, they're already ahead of the curve, but you see it's 75% conversion, and we touched on it. Georgia Tech is an excellent third down team. If you can keep them in those third and manageable situations, they can convert. Lasky. Gains five, so second down and five. Surprise. Rushing more than they are passing. It's always going to be skewed as Perkins gets his first carry of the night. Made his way back from a career threatening shoulder injury. Gains four. It's going to bring up third down and short. Again, another manageable scenario for Georgia Tech. Challenging this BYU defense. Starting to see Georgia Tech asserting itself. You know, typically the ball carrier so far this season, the primary ball carrier anyway on third down, has been bad Lee and his quarterback position. A lot of that is a function of what the defenses have done to their offense thus far this season. Ninth play of the drive. Lee keeps, sneaks ahead for the first down and more. And he's jerked down inside of the 35-yard line by Sorensen. Van Lee, the team's number two rusher. He is smart. He has great vision. Picks up 14 there. Great vision, great patience as well. And that's another thing where you can't pitch early. You have to see the game quickly, but you have to play it slow. You don't want to get ahead of yourself. But his reads have to come in microseconds. The ball has to come out when the defender closes. Three for three on third down on this drive and another penalty flag. The first out, false start, 71. Five-yard penalty, still first out. That is the fourth false start, fifth penalty overall against Georgia Tech. Well, sometimes when you want to pull, you try to get a little bit of a head start. I don't know. I'll tell you what, it looked to me like Shaquille Mason just timed it up just right. I've played guard. You want to get a nice good off so you can get in front and lead the ball carrier up into the line of scrimmage. Georgia Tech has struggled with false start penalties here tonight. I'm not so sure that one was early. Just a half minute to go here in the first quarter. We told you it would move fast. Another running play. Sims gets a couple, and then he's driven back. Ethan Manu Maliuna. It says spirit on his back. Spirit, honor, tradition. Those are the team values. Bronco Mendenhall. Put those on the back. The jerseys, they wear those for select games during the year. And tonight being homecoming, they got them on. 14-7, BYU after a quarter. Brisk moving play. 
here at the foot of the Wasatch Range. Homecoming night for the Cougars. Both teams three and two. Georgia Tech and BYU have played one. Back in Provo. Here's their Taco Bell game track after one quarter, 14 to 7, BYU. Time of possession, heavily in favor of Georgia Tech, 10 12 to 4 48. Georgia Tech ranks third in the nation in time of possession. They go about it different ways offensively, even though these two teams are very similar in a lot of regards. Well, they were coming into this ball game anyway, and all of a sudden BYU wants to start throwing the ball all over the yard. Georgia Tech, though, so far, you can see why they eat clock. Ten plays, only covering 38 yards. Second down at 14 for Georgia Tech. Vad Lee lofts it toward the corner, and Deion Hill can't run under it. Incomplete third down. Vad Lee took a shot as he released that football. Already tonight, though, we've seen Georgia Tech capable of getting behind the coverage of the BYU secondary. There's been some injuries that this defensive unit has had to endure as well at BYU. You know, a third down. This is the third and 10 plus that we were talking about. A second down pass attempt due to the you know, penalty that set them behind in the down and distance. And now you've got Georgia Tech and back to back passing sets. Lee complete. And is caught for a first down by Darren Waller. Big bodied receiver who has a ton of potential. Moves the chains for the Yellow Jackets. Vad Lee putting it right on the money. That's a well placed pass from a Sky Povey. Does a good job looking the ball in. And this is something that Vad Lee has need to improve. They're throwing the football more than they usually do, and that's still only 16 times a game on average this season. Play option pass toward the end zone. It's Waller incomplete. Covered by Daniel Sorensen. He's always around the ball. Good coverage there. It's incomplete. Second down and 10. Texas A&M and Ole Miss. Ready to come your way later tonight, 8.30 Eastern. Well, we saw Ole Miss not that long ago. Ole Miss had difficulty tackling Nick Marshall at the quarterback position. They're going to have their hands full with Johnny Manziel. 14th play of the drive. Lee started right, cuts back left, and he'll pick up just three yards. Remington Peck, the right defensive end, and Wani Unga combined on the tackle. Unga, the transfer from Oregon State. You know, going back to that previous pass play, you know, Sorensen, they went heavy play action. To set up this third down, Sorensen from his safety position had to be very disciplined. We talk about how well badly runs this option offense. Sometimes it's just find the football. When you run heavy run action, to have your safety be disciplined enough to stay in coverage, that's what gave this third down scenario. It's four for four on third down on this drive. They don't convert here. Intended for David Sims. Alani Fool, number five, in on the coverage, fourth down. And the field goal unit will come out. Well, that's twice. You know, David Sims has been able to get both hands on the football and just unable to rein it in. But Bad Lee has had a good night so far placing the football. Harrison Butker, three for five on the year. The true freshman has missed both of his attempts from inside 40, and this is from 37. And he tucks it inside that right upright. As Georgia Tech pulls within four. So Paul Johnson's team. Better performance so far in the first half than last year. Matt Schick here with your Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. To the Big Ten we go, Devin Gardner, 37 yards to Devin Funches. The second time the Devin connection has resulted in a touchdown. Michigan up 10 at Penn State midway through the fourth, Clay. All right, Matt. 14 to 10 here in Provo. Georgia Tech 
In a 37-yard field goal. Next last drive to pull within four. Alongside Matt Stinchcomb, former Georgia All-American on Clay Mavic. Don Davenport is down on the field. Georgia upset by Mizzou today. Missouri, however, lost starting quarterback James Franklin for the year. Separated shoulder, done for the season. So it's a win for the Tigers, their first signature SEC win, but they lose their starter at quarterback in the process. Well, last month, ESPNU's road trip co-host, Nikki Notel, got the chance to catch a ride with BYU head coach Bronco Mendenhall on his Harley Davidson. And he lives about 40 miles from the campus here at BYU, and he rides into work quite a bit, even when it's snowing in the mountains. He'll get on his hog and bring it in. Yeah, that's impressive, you know. He says that what, that's what makes a 45-minute ride more enjoyable. Here's Jamal Williams spinning across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Mendenhall took over BYU when they were coming out three straight losing seasons. He's taken them to eight straight bowl games now, and the Cougars have won the last four. That's a school record. He's done a great job here. Adam Hine in the backfield on second and four. Taysom Hill continues to throw strikes. That's going to be close to a first down. He's now eight for eight passing. It's pretty remarkable. And, and we talked about it with BYU's offensive coordinator. We touched on it, Robert and I coming back. He's saying, look, you have to get the fundamentals down first. They've been very run oriented. But you could see last week as they started to develop this aspect of their offense and it's paying dividends tonight so far. They faked the run, throwing on the run is Hill, and he misses Hine. That's his first incompletion, so second and ten. We talked about Robert and I being here before, and we visited with Bronco Mendenhall and talked about that departure, and he said it just seemed obvious that we needed to evolve more offensively. That's a run straight up the middle, gain of three. As Hine gets the carry, third down now. And a lot of respect between these two men. And Robert and I said, look, I think it's important for me to leave. I want to go and expand my offensive exposure. And that's why we see the BYU offense that we've seen so far this season. Although this passing attack is a new aspect. Looks pretty good. Cody Hoffman. Another catch for Hoffman. That's his fourth. Demond Smith finally makes the tackle. But it's a pickup of 22, and they're into plus territory. You see Taysom Hill. That's a well-timed throw, well-placed as well. Cody Hoffman, obviously a record-setting, soon to be a record-breaking receiver here at BYU. It's just two more receptions. They go back to Hine, and he's dumped in the backfield for a loss. Adam Gotsis, his second big play of the first half. Great penetration by Adam Gotsis to disrupt this play. Yeah, seeing some of that read, that read option offense that BYU was running and has been running far more prevalently than what we've seen here tonight on that show. Second and 15, complete. Skyler Ridley, former walk-on, now captain. Short gain inside the 40. You know, again, they're changing this offense. It's a completely new staff, up-tempo, zone read now. Robert and I says, I'm not in the business of appeasing people's feelings. BYU fans, they're used to the pass around here, but we're going to do what it takes to compete and win games. False love. First down reception. Finally pushed out at the 20. And as we say that, we're seeing more pass than run here in the first half from BYU. Well, why wouldn't you? you know, when you're seeing Taysom Hill, who is on fire in the passing game tonight, victimizing a Georgia Tech secondary that we've already touched on, Ted Roof was not pleased with the play of his defense, but most of the changes have been in the second day. A keeper for Taysom Hill. They gashed this Georgia defense, Georgia Tech defense for 10 more. Patrick Gamble makes the tackle as we go down to dawn. We talked about Ted Roof not being happy with his defense. Well, before this possession or whatever it was the deflated defense he was actually pretty positive with his guys he made a lot of judgments said eyes and feet guys eyes and feet well, thank you Don second and one Run. Run. 
Hill. Got away from the tackle and picks up the first down. Jabari Hunt Days was ready to drop him for a loss, and Hill stayed on his feet. Taysom Hill, 6'2, 220. You see, he wants to throw this football as a run pass option. What a great job of breaking tackles. We're talking about Coach Roof, the decor for Georgia Tech. He's got to be sick seeing those missed tackles on that play. And now Algie Brown gets it inside the five. Second down and goal to go. Yeah, the, the tackles that were missed last week against Miami for Georgia Tech, number 20. And the Hurricanes racked up a lot of yards after contact. That's another reason why you're seeing new faces and new places for this Tech dude. 12th play of the drive, man wide open, underthrown, and Lasique can't haul it in, but there is a penalty flag on the play. And it's going to be a holding against BYU. Holding, number 55, offense. 10-yard penalty, still second down. That's our guy, Braden Kersley. We hit on him before. He's at center, right there in the middle of your screen. Wow. I'll tell you what, I don't know. You know it looks to me, looked to me like Sean Green was going to go down anyway. That's a pretty, that's a pretty iffy call. They're asking a lot of Kersley tonight. He is a true freshman. Getting the start with Terrence Aletto out because of a stinger. Hill keeps, gets in, touchdown. Another flag on the play. This is another hold against BYU. Holding, number one offense, 10 yard penalty, still second down. Ross Sapo, the wide receiver called this time. You know, a lot of times when you'll see a quarterback, you get these big runs that break off. It's, it's not just the ball carrier breaking tackles, but it's receivers blocking downfield. We mentioned Ross Oppo is a big target in the passing game. You see him blocking downfield. He's got a handful of jersey. I tell you what, I don't know. Maybe turn loose of the jersey. That time working on Jamia Thomas. But uh, that's two pretty ticky tack holding calls. So it's going to be second down and goal. They spot it back at the 11-yard line. BYU leading 14 to 10. Nine and a half minutes to go here, first half. Williams in the backfield with Hill. They fake it to Williams. They throw. Oppo, the intended receiver, well covered and complete. Jamia Thomas was there. The fifth-year senior in the secondary. And it brings up third and goal. We've seen an adjustment that Ted Roof has made. He's moved Jamia Thomas back to corner, letting him match up man-to-man. -man. You see him again here, matched up man-to-man. -man. Hill takes off again, picking his way. And he's driven down at the five. It'll bring up fourth down. So Hill gets six back. It'll set up a shorter field goal attempt for BYU's kicker, Justin Sorensen. A great open field tackle by Thomas came up off of coverage. Did a good job getting Hill on the ground. And once again, though, BYU able to stage another very successful offensive drive. Some of that a function of just poor tackling by Georgia Tech. 23 yard attempt for Sorensen. And it's back to a touchdown lead for the Cougars. Taysom Hill engineering a pretty good drive, some penalties. Hurting BYU on that series. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Golden Corral's Ultimate Wing and Appetizer Bar. It's Buffalo Wings, Mini Crab Cake Sliders, and more. And Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Cougars athletes going on missions for the LDS Church and they go to all corners of the globe including Taysom Hill 
He committed to Stanford to play for Jim Harbaugh back in 2009. Then he went on his two-year Mormon mission to Australia. And while he was gone, Jim Harbaugh went on to the NFL. He decided, you know what? Now that Jim Harbaugh's gone, I'm going to go to BYU, and it's working out well for both. That's why we were kind of mocking the idea that here's a running quarterback that goes to Stanford. Oh, boy, the Cardinal really covered those running quarterbacks. Here tonight, Taysom Hill showing he could be a passer as well. Sorensen puts it into the end zone. Lynn Griffin takes an E. Tomorrow, ESPNU's coverage of women's college volleyball continues. Central Florida taking on Louisville. It's tomorrow at 1 on ESPNU, also live on Watch ESPN. So Georgia Tech started at the 25-yard line. Vad Lee, 2 for 6 passing, 64 yards. Completed a big 45-yard pass on third down to keep a drive alive. Led to Georgia Tech's only touchdown tonight. Also had a couple of drops. Well-thrown yeah. balls so far by Vad Lee tonight. Lee pitches it out to Sinjin Days. The penalty marker comes out as Days is leveled by Sorensen and Jorgensen. One-yard pickup. Shot block against Georgia Tech. The sixth penalty against the Yellow Jackets. You know, with Georgia Tech, when you run the option offense, there's a lot of cut blocks. A lot of cut blocks by the Personal offensive foul. lineman. Shot block, offense, number 78 and number 50. The penalty is half the distance. Still first down. Trey Braun and the center, Jay Finch. Yeah, and you know, watch, whenever, see, Fitch is still engaged, and Braun goes down low. And whenever you do that, if the defender is still engaged with the adjacent lineman, you cannot cut him. And sometimes it's really close. You're cutting it very thin as far as your adjacent line mate, cutting loose of the defensive lineman and releasing, giving you an opportunity to cut. There resulted in a chop block. Play fake. Lee throws. Waller, the intended receiver. Daniel in on the coverage, so second down and long. Spirit, tradition, and honor. The words on the back of the BYU jerseys tonight, not their names. Those are the team values. That's Bronco Mendenhall's idea. Some of the players didn't like it at first. They're coming around to it, though. Uh, that's a good idea to hammer the, the idea home, for sure. I'm thinking this is not their names. That's a lot of cousins running around out there. <laughs> this one's whistled dead. Oh, my. It's been that kind of half for Georgia Tech. Before the snap, false start, left guard, five-yard penalty, still second down. And they got Trey Braun again. You know, number 78, he was in on the chop block to play before. And they're saying he's moving early. I, I don't know, Clay. I'll tell you, this, I've seen a couple of holding penalties that, I don't know, were iffy at best, and there have been at least two false starts versus Georgia Tech. Well, I'm not seeing it. I don't, I don't see anybody moving early. They might be timing it perfectly, but it looked like Trey Brown was early. Georgia Tech going the wrong way. This drive started at the 25. Second and 27, and more flags. And again, a false start. Start, number 52, half the distance. Second down. Will Jackson. They're just moving down the line. You know, you got a chop block that involved the center and the left guard. Now this time, it's going to be the left tackle. See him moving. All right, now that one I can agree with. You see there, I don't know if something's going on with the cadence because it's loud in here, but it's not that loud. Not to the point where you've got this many false starts. Of the seven Georgia Tech penalties here in the first half, six have been false starts. That's pretty remarkable. And again, like we said, this crowd's into it, but it's not deafening loud in here. Second and a boat ride. Bad Lee gets a chunk back. 
Gain of nine, so now third down. They need the 35 yard line to move the chains. They'll spot it at the 17. Clock moving inside of eight minutes now. 17 10, BYU leading Georgia Tech. Both teams three and two. Georgia Tech has lost two straight. BYU has won two straight. And this was third and 17. You know, you're the play call, Paul Johnson. Go into your playbook and pull out your third and 17 call. Van Noy in pursuit. And Georgia Tech left to punt. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the box. Incomplete pass. Well, that time, Alani Fua was able to get the initial pressure, move Vad Lee off of his spot. It was very difficult, you know, to have any type of subterfuge as an offense when you're facing that down and distance. It simplifies things for the defense. You know, it doesn't matter what type of offense you're running. It's a relatively obvious passing down. Georgia Tech has shown a propensity tonight to convert third and longs, but there with the pressure, incapable to allow Vad Lee an opportunity to get the ball down field. Now we're going to get a timeout called by Georgia Tech. The first timeout of the first half. 7.26 to go here in the second. It's 17-10 Cougars. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Back here in Provo, three penalties on this Georgia Tech series. They're ready to punt it back to BYU. J.D. Falslev is back for the Cougars. Sean Poole on for his second punt. Standing at the five-yard line. Low snap. That's a kick away. Calling for the fair catch is Falslev. And Taysom Hill will bring him out starting at the 45. He has looked good through the air. He's looked excellent, and BYU came out gunning it in the air. As we touched on it, Taysom Hill has proven to be an excellent passer so far here tonight. We mentioned Georgia Tech, some moving parts in their secondary. But this evening, Taysom Hill, he spread the football around the five different receivers. Obviously, to the right of their formation, has been very productive in their passing game. Seven of eight. We'll run it here, Williams. Right into the teeth of the Georgia Tech defense. There'll be no gain for the Cougars second down. Coming up on seven minutes to go before half. Hill recovers, throws, complete. Brett Thompson, the tight end. Gain of 14 and a first down. Nice patience by Taysom Hill, of course. And he's Brett Thompson. You know, he's just leaking out into the flats and is unaccounted for by Georgia Tech in their secondary. Some confusion in the coverage. BYU capitalizing on it. First and 10 from the 41 of Georgia Tech. He'll complete again. Mitch Matthews this time, and he's out near the 25-yard line. Matthews had a great week last week, five catches for 112 yards and three touchdowns. Matthews, uh, every touchdown catch he's got this year was last week. And Jamea Thomas is saying, you know, this is a physical receiver. He's pushing off on me. Thomas is one of the best defenders for Georgia Tech. Sprinting out his heel. He's going to keep it. Lowers his head, and it looks like he's got another first down. He is still maturing as a quarterback, but it seems to be happening pretty quickly. First full year as a full-time starter. Had just two starts last year before a season-ending knee injury. That's a lot to put on the shoulders of a sophomore, learning a new offense. Seems to be getting it done. Williams bangs his way inside the 10. Really something else, too, that I think has maybe slowed down the development of this offense, not only young quarterback, new offense, 
but so many different moving parts in their offensive front. Incidentally, something we hadn't touched on, this offensive line doing a pretty good job keeping Taysom Hill clean when they are attempting passes downfield. Play clock shows zero. And it is going to be against BYU. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second out. Now, there's something you don't see very often when you've got an <laughs> offense snaps the ball every 19 seconds. They must have gotten the play call in there late. Truth be told, I've been lulled to sleep. I'm surprised the play clock was exhausted. Throws again, complete down to the one. It's false left. First down, goal to go, BYU after the 13-yard reception. Coming into this game, Georgia Tech had to be thinking, let's make BYU beat us with the pass. And, you know, perhaps that's something that the opposite sideline can also anticipate. And as we mentioned, BYU came out and established a passing game and right that way. He'll throw again to the corner of the end zone, knocked down. Cody Hoffman battling Jamia Thomas, and Thomas wins the battle, second down and goal. And the Thomas is shaken up on that play. He's headed to the sidelines. He's going to be replaced by D.J. White. Don't be surprised if BYU goes right back over there. Hill will keep it, and he'll run it in. Touchdown, BYU. Taysom Hill runs it in, even though he threw for 45 yards on that 55-yard drive. And the extra point is good. It's 24 to 10, Cougars. So challenging when you face a mobile quarterback, and not just in the run game, but tonight, Taysom Hill making a defense defend the passing game as well, stretching an already stressed Georgia Tech defense, and it's paying big dividends for this BYU offense. Matt Chick here back in the studio with this update. Utah looking for an upset against Stanford, up 21 to 14 in the third time. Montgomery had a kick return for a touchdown last week and this week. He fumbles, though. Utah recovers. They would go three downs and fail to score inside the 10. And right now, Utah with a field goal. They're up 10. We'll update that in half. Clemson with a close call in uh, the ACC as well. And Missouri with a big win and loses their quarterback, Clay. All right, Matt. Yeah, a lot of news in college football today, not the least of which Mac Brown may be taking a step towards saving his job at Texas. Big upset over Oklahoma. Today. Yeah, I mean, when this is a team that we're watching here tonight in BYU. They did it with a record-setting rushing day, 550 rushing yards versus that Texas defense. And that's what really kind of rattled the uh, Mac Brown regime over yep. there at Texas. You can see that they've still got an opportunity to win the Big 12, and it certainly was a key victory in a rivalry game versus Oklahoma. And shaken up for BYU. Thomas, excuse me, for Georgia Tech, was uh, shaken up on that last play. Georgia Tech three and out on its last possession. They had three penalties on the drive. Again, they start at the 25. Vad Lee. Complete. Quickly wrapped up. At the 30-yard line for a five-yard game is DeAndre Smelter. BYU has scored on four straight drives that Georgia Tech defense really has some issues right now. Yeah, and part of it, too, is the BYU defense getting the ball back to them. We just mentioned Georgia Tech a three and out on their previous possession. Already, Georgia Tech defense facing 38 offensive snaps by BYU. It's important that Tech possess the football here. Pitch out. Got high. Dragging tacklers across the 45-yard line. A gain of 16 for Robert Godhigh. Five foot seven, 190 pounds, but the senior really packs a punch. 
Well, at that time, it was BYU's turn to have poor tackling there on the perimeter. Daniel Sorensen coming up empty. They're trying to rake the football out. You got to get the ball carrier down on the ground. Now they're allowing Georgia Tech pick up needed yardage, but more than anything, allow that Tech defense to get their legs underneath them. Oh, their second first down of the quarter. As David Sims drives ahead, he gets six. Most thorough college football show on television. In-depth analysis, discussion, potential impact of the upcoming games, and interviews with college football coaches and players. You don't want to miss it. BCS Countdown presented by Allstate tomorrow at 8.30 on ESPN. Then at 9 on ESPNU. First BCS standings come out a week from tomorrow night. Second down and four. Toss sweep. And it's going to be a gain of three and a first down for Perkins. Here's the AP top ten coming into the week. Oregon a win. Clemson able to get past Boston College to set up that big one with Florida State next week. Alabama leading Kentucky. Georgia then lost to Mizzou. That's the big one. You know, that's when you start talking about upward mobility in the top ten. You got to get somebody to drop a ball game. Georgia, they've been on life support. You know, they've just been losing players left and right. And obviously Missouri get that victory, but they lose their key component to their offense in James Franklin at the quarterback position. Perkins is short by about a foot. So it's third and one for Tech. That's just BYU defense. Well, Georgia Tech doesn't punt very often. They're only averaging three punts a game. We've only seen two here tonight. Total from both teams. BYU is an excellent defense in forcing those changes of possession. Not via turnover, but just getting stops. And we've already talked about it here. It's incredibly difficult if you allow this Georgia Tech offense to get into a third and even three or less for them to play on a three yard football field with the number of options that they have in their ground game. It's very, very hard for you to slow them down. That's why it's called the triple option. That's, right. I guess. That's why they're 54 percent on the season on third down. We will keep it. He's got it. And then he's upended at the 42. Number Johnny football Texas A&M taking on Ole Miss tonight we had the pleasure of doing that game last year it turned into a great shootout one that Texas A&M barely won you know if Ole Miss doesn't come up short on a fourth down it's probably uh, the Rebels that get the victory over the Aggies last year and maybe Johnny Manziel doesn't win the Heisman that's true Van Lee is dumped Sacked by Kyle Van Noy at midfield. We've seen Kyle Van Noy come unaccounted for a couple of times tonight. And again here, he just sneaks upfield. And we've mentioned a couple of times tonight, Trey Braun, a couple of penalties, but that time he was pulling from his guard position. And he just doesn't get across the formation fast enough. Van Noy is upfield so quickly. That, that right there was like the Jadavian Clowney hit that we saw a million times on YouTube beating the pulling guard. Three on second and 15, feeling pressure again. Throws complete. First down to DeAndre Smelter, who was on the Georgia Tech baseball team the last three years, joined the football team in June, and he's become their leading receiver. Give him a first down after a pickup of 19. That confusion in the secondary for BYU. You see Smelter down here at the bottom of your screen, and you'll watch Scott Povey just falls off the coverage. He's handing him off to, to the safety. The safety never picked him up. Now Lee to the end zone, and he was trying to hit Robert Godhai, who's on a wheel route. Sorensen in on the coverage, second down and 10. Well, that's the difficulty of defending this offense. You start thinking, okay, here they are in the flex bone formation where you've got three different options of ball carriers. They're almost like wingbacks 
when you see them, these, these A-backs that they call them in the offense. But if you load up the box, they're also excellent receivers, and you get good matchups. There you get Godhai matched up on a safety and Daniel Sorensen, and he had a step. Georgia Tech. Second and 10 at the 27 at BYU. Down two touchdowns. Lee. In and out of the hands of Deion Hill. Should have been caught. Now third and 10. We've seen how many drops? Three drops. I think you could probably rule them that way. Two by D David Sims and now Deion Hill. We're Vad Lee, you know, coming into this game. Here we are. We're preparing for this ball game. We got two quarterbacks. They like to run the ball, having difficulty throwing it. Georgia Tech not enjoying as much success, but that's more a function of the receivers than it is Vad Lee delivering a catchable football. Tenth play of the drive. Virginia Tech six of nine on third down tonight. Lee hoists it toward the end zone. Almost intercepted by Sorensen. You know, if you give Vad Lee time tonight, when he's had opportunity to throw the football, he's delivered it on target. But the times when BYU has been able to get pressure on him, you know, Van Noy is an excellent pass rusher. This time he gets upfield and flushes him right into Kafusi. And Badley has to throw off his back foot and under duress. Butker setting up from 44 out. He hit from 37 earlier. And for the second time, he's good. 59 seconds remaining. And it's 24-13. As we're under a minute to go here in the first half. You know, Paul Johnson has to be concerned about his Georgia Tech offense. There have been a lot of mistakes tonight. Attention to detail has been a problem the last couple of weeks in losses to Virginia Tech and Miami. Uh, it essentially took him out of the ACC Coastal race. It seems like motivation might be an issue for this team right now. I don't know if it's, if it's so much that as it is execution in areas. I mean, we've seen BYU. Where you know, Kyle Van Noy, he's coming up field. Your, your pulling guard just doesn't get over there in time. And then one possession was completely scuttled by a series of penalties, a chop block, and then a couple of false starts. And next thing you know, you're, you've got a third and 20 scenario. And nobody's looking for that sort of thing. And right when you thought Georgia Tech's offense was starting to plane out, they start hitting choppy water. Some of that is of their own doing due to the penalties. Some of that's also this BYU defense is stepping up and making plays when they had to. But Bad Lee tonight has kept him in the game offensively with his passing prowess, which is definitely not anything that I think we anticipated coming in the ballgame. Adam Hine back deep to return this kick from Butker, and he'll bring it out. Adam Hine tripped up. At the 13-yard line, good coverage by Georgia Tech. That was Tyler Marcordes. Dr. Pepper quest for the coach's trophy. And Paul Johnson, now in his sixth season at Georgia Tech, averaging eight wins a year, best in school history. Two-time ACC coach of the year. Team got out to a hot 3-0 start. They've lost the last two. Hill on the run, complete to Cody Hoffman. And Hoffman now with five catches. That's a gain of 11 and a first down. He is going to become the career leader in pass receptions here tonight. Just needs one more. He's already got 99 yards and a touchdown to boot. Williams straight ahead. Gain of five, second down. And I'll tell you what, that's pretty high praise when you start talking about being a, a career receptions leader, yardage leader at the wide receiver position at this school. Hill. First down. Makes his way to the sideline and gets out at the 47. 
that's what Georgia Tech has to worry about now. They're back on their heels because they have to respect the pass. Well, you know, they had a timeout to burn. I think before that big gainer, it was almost as if BYU was content to take it into the locker room, but now an opportunity to get in the scoring position. Hill steps away from trouble into Georgia Tech territory near the 42-yard line. D.J. White ran him out, but it's another first down. And the clock stops with 16 seconds to go. Once again, you know, Atauchu is up on pressuring Hill. Sometimes that's a blessing and a curse, especially when you lose contain. Hill over the middle. Caught. First down again. That'll stop the clock because they have to move the chains down to the 29-yard line. Another 13-yard pickup. Now, Justin Sorensen doesn't have a real strong leg. They like to get it inside that 25-yard line to feel comfortable with him. As long this season is 36. And a timeout for BYU with nine seconds to go here in the half. Let's take a look back with our drive recap presented by Tire Rack. Well, so far tonight, Taysom Hill not so much with his legs, more so with his arm, delivering the football, spreading it around, hitting his slot receivers, and then when they need the tough yards, they know that their quarterback can pick them up. You know, see, we're seeing here in a two-minute drill, Taysom Hill is able to pick up key yardage and now progress this offense into a position where they can squeak out some more points before this half expires. A little physical runner, we're seeing a nice passing touch by Taysom Hill. He's distributed the football well, and he's run with power. You see that field goal line there. That is where Justin Sorensen's career long was spotted at. We need about 11 more yards. Clock winding inside of five seconds. Hill has to hurry. Gets rid of it. Out of bounds, and with one second left, they may have a long field goal attempt. There is a marker down. Gonna go against BYU. This might take him even further out of field goal range for Sorensen. An eligible receiver downfield, number 50, five yard penalty, still first down. It's Edward Fusi. You see, sometimes that happens. You know, offensive lineman, your quarterback scrambling around. He's thinking, oh, he's just going to keep running. You end up releasing downfield. Now Sorensen, this would be a career best. 52-yard attempt. And now Georgia Tech calls a timeout to put Sorensen on ice. Justin Sorensen had back issues last year. He's been healthy this year, and he's been much more consistent because of it. 9 of 10 on the year with a long of 36. But again, this will be a 52-yard attempt. More college football on the U later tonight. The Beavers taking on the Cougars in the Pac-12. College football primetime presented by 5-Hour Energy, Oregon State, Washington State, 10.30 Eastern time on ESPNU. Sean Mannion, the quarterback for Oregon State. Connor Halliday for Washington State. Two pretty good passing quarterbacks, two good passing offenses. Sean Mannion maybe one of the most underrated passers. He, Petty, Baylor, guys that you don't hear mentioned very often amongst all these other Heisman candidates at quarterback. Sorensen to make it 27-13 before half. New. That's going to do it. 24-13 at the break. BYU, Georgia Tech will start with the football in the second half. I'll tell you what, the BYU, when they came into this ball game, and many people thought that this was going to be a run-oriented offense. Lots of growth yet to be done. But clearly, this team started to turn the corner last week versus Utah State. And then so far tonight, it's been that passing attack that has really paced the offense so far and challenged Georgia Tech's defense to defend both phases of BYU's offense.
Taysom Hill, 226 passing and a touchdown, 57 rushing and a touchdown. And we're only through 30 minutes. Let's go down to Don. Coach, your offense able to move the ball well that first half. How can you assess Taysom Hill's performance? He's doing a really nice job. We have a good plan, mixing run and throw, and so I think he's doing a great job to this point. On the other side of the ball, Georgia Tech held the ball for a while, but you hold them to 13 points. What do you want to see out of your defense the next half? Just third downs. We need to play better on long third downs especially. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Yeah, Georgia Tech's got some things they've got to clean up, especially defensively. Now we go to the studio for the halftime report. 24-13 at the break. Here's Matt Schick. Thank you, Clay and Matt. Taysom Hill closing in on 300 total yards of offense in this one. BYU with a 24 to. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football, presented by Five Hour Energy. Play Matt Vick, Don Davenport, Matt Stinchcomb back here in Provo, Utah, 24-13 BYU leading on homecoming night. Taysom Hill, quite a first half story for the BYU Cougars, so much for this running attack we've been hearing about. He's doing a great job through the air, had a career passing game last week. He may top it here tonight. Well, he's on his way, that's for sure. You can see it, and it was a concerted effort by BYU offensively to establish that pass right out of the gate. And Taysom Hill has responded, getting all of his receivers incorporating into the passing game. He's hit some downfield shots. He's also shown touch and timing. And there is still that mobile run element at the quarterback position for BYU. First half stats brought to you by John Deere. Taysom Hill, 283 yards of total offense or passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown. The penalties have to be a concern for Georgia Tech. Even though BYU had seven in the first half, too. Georgia Tech had six false starts. Yeah, that's something that they obviously have to clean up. And, and part of that is, is it makes it so difficult to even get a drive established. We've seen two, three and out for this Georgia Tech offense. And one of those directly attributable to three consecutive penalties. Georgia Tech will have the football to start the second half. And Griffin catches it out of the back of the end zone. It's a touchback. They'll start at the 25, and let's go down to Don. It's hard to play any worse than that. That's what a pretty honest Georgia Tech head coach Paul Johnson told his team at the half. He said, especially defensively. Offensively, he said, he's not that worried. They just have to limit mistakes and penalties. They'll be fine there. But defensively, he said, they have to stay with their assignments. They're not paying attention or looking at guys. He said, that's something they have to change in order to be successful this half. All right, Don. Well, we saw them be better on third down in the first half, 6 of 10, than they were last year, 0 for 10. There are certainly other issues as DeAndre Smelter makes the catch for no gain. Robertson Daniel, the field corner, the junior college transfer, wraps him up. Kyle Van Noy, he's always around the ball. He was there as well. You know, the biggest difference between these two offenses in the first half is the first and second down proficiency and what they've been able to do you see BYU, they racked up 21 first downs in the first half. They only faced four third downs. Right. Had to punt just once in that first half. Bad Lee keeps it. Again, no gain. Austin Jorgensen this time. Making the tackle from his middle linebacker spot. Well played by BYU. You talk about assignment football. You hear Paul Johnson lamenting his defense and their inability to stay with their assignments. Part of that. I think has to be a function of a BYU offense that has kind of reverted back to its days of yore, where they're throwing the football around. But really, they were very, very balanced offensively when they're play calling. A man down for BYU, and it's Ethan Manamaliuna, the senior from Anchorage, Alaska. He uh, missed most of last year with a knee injury. He is a key part to that defensive front for the Cougars. And it looks like he's putting weight 
on his legs and he's making his way to the sideline. I think he's going to be all right, but you see him right here, nose tackle, head up the center. And as he disengages, you know what? I think he stepped on his teammate's foot. I think he stepped on Remington Peck's foot. And it might just come down on it strangely. That's a lot of weight coming down on that foot at 305. BYU trying to get off the field on third down. Georgia Tech quarterback Hadley is going down at the 15. Spencer Hadley and Kyle Van Noy drop him for a loss of 10. And welcome back to the team, Spencer Hadley. Spencer Hadley has not been with the team uh, due to some off-field violations of their honor code. This is what BYU thought their defense could look like this year. You got Kyle Van Noy on one side, and then you've got Spencer Hadley on the other, and they're both converging on passers as it happened just there for Van Lee. Suspended the last game, last three games. Hadley makes an impact, forcing the third Georgia Tech punt. False left, lets it bounce, and it takes a beautiful Georgia Tech roll inside the 30-yard line. Down to the 27. Good kick for Sean Poole. It's a 58-yard boot. And now the offense goes back to work for the Cougars. Taysom Hill. 283 yards of total offense in that first half. 226 through the air. And that short, intermediate passing game for Hill has been exceptional. You know, and he, I think he started to establish that rapport a week ago, Utah State. We've touched on that. Also got to keep in mind, though, that he's hit some shots downfield, Cody Hoffman being one of those targets. It's not like he's just dinking and dunking in the passing game. He'll hand off to Williams with a touchdown in the first half. And this is going to be a loss, a yard on the play. Jeremiah Atauchu, the defensive end, fairly quiet tonight for Georgia Tech as BYU has done a pretty good job keeping him out of the play. Well, he's been out of the lineup a couple of times, but he's created a pressure. Second and 12. Now Hill steps away from the rush, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Picks up a couple of yards. The shoestring tackle there. You know, this is part of what we were touching on earlier, how effective BYU was on the early downs, not even getting to a third down, third and long here. Hill on third and 13, incomplete. Brett Thompson coming across the middle from his tight end spot, can't haul it in. And now, the punting unit comes out for just the second time tonight, Scott Arlano. First year punter. Just the second three and out for BYU. That was right on time. Of course, you come out of halftime. You got to reestablish yourself. Coach Paul Johnson was concerned about his defensive performance to come in and get a three and out. It sets the tone for the second half. Smelter back. And Arlano, another punt that goes out of bounds. And good field position for Georgia Tech when we come back. Bronco Mendenhall has done a great thing here at BYU off the field. He and his wife have started a foundation. That young man has been a part of that special foundation. We'll tell you the story next. BYU head coach Bronco Mendenhall in 2006, he and his wife Holly started a program at BYU called Thursday's Heroes to honor children and families who are facing significant life challenges. This past Thursday, Dustin Matthews and his family were invited to attend practice. We're, we're all gonna sign this as a team for you. Okay. And you can put this in the family room or wherever you want, but I, I say the family room. And since you're one of our heroes, we want you to sign this for us. One, two, three. Go Cougars! Team signed a flag for him. And Dustin signed the BYU flag that they run out onto the field with before every game. And of course, Dustin in attendance with his family. And Dustin, an amazing story, had a stroke at the age of two. He's been in a wheelchair ever since. Despite that, he graduated from college and now teaches computer classes for Western Wyoming Community College. That's remarkable. Best starting field position for Georgia Tech at their own 45. They give it to Zach Lasky, and nothing doing. As Marcus Johnson makes the tackle. Bronco Mendenhall 
eight straight bowl games. He has taken the Cougars too. He is very devoted to this university off the field as well as on it. You know, it takes a lot. This is a special place. You know, and it takes a special player, a special kind of person to be able to play at BYU. Vad Lee looked right, turned back toward the left, and a good run across midfield, a gain of eight before Blake Morgan tips him down. And so now another third down for Georgia Tech. And there you see tradition on the back of Kyle Van Noy's jersey, honor and spirit also on the jerseys tonight. Not the players' names. That's representation of the team values that Bronco Mendenhall wants these guys to aspire to. Georgia Tech 6 of 11 on third down tonight. Did they pick it up? Bad Lee pushed back by Marcus Johnson. And he did not pick it up. Fourth down. Marcus Johnson in at the nose tackle spot for Manu Maliuna. And really manning it well. He shed the block of Jay Finch right at the point of attack, the center. They tried to double team him. It looked to me like Vad Lee was just trying to leap to the backside. Marcus Johnson was waiting on him. Paul Johnson willing to roll the dice early here in the second half and go for it on fourth down. Ethan Mata Maliuna came out defensively on the last series. On fourth and two, Lee is hit, and I don't think he got it. Ronnie Unga wrapped him up, and it appears, judging by that yellow line, which isn't official, that he's short. They turn it over on downs. Once again, you see that basically the same blocking scheme, Wani Unga unaccounted for in this run. Paul Johnson and his team have to be frustrated, but excellent job by BYU getting hats in the gap and able to get penetration. We touched on this earlier. Georgia Tech very proficient when they've got such short yardage to go. In fact, they were 100% converting these short yardage, third and short situations in the first half. You could see why Paul Johnson felt comfortable going for it on fourth, but well played by Unga. Jamal Williams on first down, picks up three. This defense for BYU ranked as high as number three last year. And this year ranked 24th as that's complete to J.D. Falslev. Move the chains to the 42-yard line of Georgia Tech. And once again, BYU getting a first down with only two downs to get there. Hill being chased. Gets it along that sideline and picks up that's six yards on the play. Watts ran him out. The third quarter has been good for both teams this year. You see where you know, adjustments can be made at halftime, something that Paul Johnson can do with his offense, make the tweaks, see how defenses are playing them. But BYU, kind of curiously, really, because, because of that pace, part of it is exhausting the defense. They're coming out of halftime, and yet it's one of their better quarters. I'm going to say Hill stepped out at the 39, so they move it three yards back. And Williams dives ahead for three more, and it'll bring up third down in about four. This is, this is a small victory for Georgia Tech defensively. This is only the sixth third down that they forced all game. His back foot, Hill. Oh, it should have been caught by Williams. He dropped it. He was ready to turn up field before he had the completion. And so now it's fourth down. Well, that's reminiscent of Georgia Tech on a couple of third downs in the first half. And, you know, you see Vad Lee's trying to deliver the football downfield, hitting receivers in the hands. It was David Sims was the culprit, which is really his key backfield mate. And this time it's Jamal Williams for Taysom Hill. Third punt for Scott Arlano. Walked on, replacing All-American Riley Stevenson this year. He's had a tough night, but how about that? No, nope, can't keep it out of the end zone. Daniel Sorensen was right 
in the position he needed to be, but it, I don't know if he kept it out. Now they're going to call a touchback. So Georgia Tech will have it at the 20-yard line. He didn't down it. Twenty-four thirteen BYU here in the third quarter. Daniel Sorensen, the best special teams player for the Cougars, made a mistake inside the five-yard line. Had he caught this ball, it would have been dead at the one. Yep, just catch it. We don't need to hacky sack it back out of the uh, end zone. Just catch that ball. I think he thought he was closer to the goal line than he really was. But Bronco Mendenhall said NFL scouts think Sorensen's one of the best gunners on the punt team in college football. Van Lee and Georgia Tech back to work on offense, and Lee slips down, loss of a half yard. Let's go to the studio for an update with Matt Schick. All right, thanks, guys. It is over in Penn State. Penn State in fourth overtime, down three. They say forget the three. They went for it on fourth, got it, then first and goal. Bill Belton, touchdown. They win it in four overtimes over Michigan, 43-40. to Utah beats Stanford, 27-21. Wow, what a win for the Nittany Lions. What a win for the Utes. Robert Godhigh, the catch. Yeah, it's a gain of five. It's going to bring up third down for Georgia Tech. BYU, after the loss to Utah, they've won two straight, trying to keep it going here against Georgia Tech today. Yeah, that's the, the sworn enemy of the BYU Cougars are the Utah Utes with a landmark victory in their Young tenure in the Pac-12, and obviously Georgia Tech pleased to see Georgia go down in the top ten today. Lee dumped Remington Peck having a great game at defensive end for BYU. Sacks Lee, and now it's a loss of four and fourth down for Georgia Tech. Well, both offenses kind of disjointed, but Remington Peck, he's been a one-man wrecking crew. He's done an excellent job, did a great job on the previously short yardage. You see him lined up inside, Van Noy stand up outside. And watch Peck. He just gets upfield so quickly. That's a design QB draw, but fully a missed assignment up front for Georgia Tech and their offensive line. Should be good field position again for BYU. False uh, standing at the 40. He'll return this one. Gets to the outside, the 45, a stiff arm, and he's out of bounds at the BYU 48. Georgia Tech, a punt. They turned it over on downs, and another punt. It's been a sputtering offense here in the second half for Georgia Tech. BYU continues to lead it 24-13 with 6.36 to go here in the third. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Last month, ESPNU's road trip co-host, Nikki Noto and Ali Nujat, had a chance to go fly fishing with Taysom Hill, the BYU quarterback, right there on the Provo River. This is just a beautiful area. You and I and Tom and Seth from our crew got a chance to see some of the scenery last night as Jamal Williams gets the carry for two yards on first down. And we ate at Robert Redford's restaurant up in the mountains. Just yeah, well, beautiful. One of several up there at his resort right up the road. It's a beautiful part of the country. Now Williams drop. A loss of a yard. So now third down and long coming up. Bronco Mendenhall. We showed you earlier that he's got a Harley Davidson motorcycle that he likes to get out and ride every chance he can get. And with this scenery, who can blame him? He's really uh, into having personal balance in his life with his professional football career. And as that one is incomplete intended for Cody Hoffman. Had he caught that, it would have been a school record catch. But it's incomplete and it's fourth down. Well, looking to try to maintain some offensive balance so far this second half. See BYU two straight runs and then on a third down, unable to connect. Taysom Hill was just a little bit behind Hoffman still. Well, Hoffman, a sure-handed receiver, could have, should have come down with that catch. 
and get an update on Utah and Stanford coming up in a moment. Fourth punt for BYU, and he got it that time. Daniel Sorensen keeps it out of the end zone. Not very often you get a, a chance to atone for a mistake just moments later. Sorensen does, and he makes good. I mean, he gets style points for this one, too. Look at this between the legs. Well, that's nice, man. What a great play. Making up for the last one. Last time he could have just caught it. This time he had no choice. So much momentum. What a great weapon on your punt team to have a gunner that can get downfield that quickly and then pin your opponent that far back. Georgia Tech's offense with no margin for error, and they have struggled this entire half. Five three and outs tonight on eight possessions. Three straight this half, man. It's been ugly. On first down, Lee from the end zone throws on the run. God, I, the intended receiver, sailed over his head by 10 yards. Let's go to the studio for an update with Matt. All right, Clay, for five weeks now, we've had the same teams in the AP Top 5. That is going to change as number 5 Stanford loses to Utah 27-21, the first Top 10 team to lose to an unranked opponent this season, Clay. And it's been a tough week for David Shaw, accused of his players faking injuries, and now he gets upset by Utah. Lee on the hoof, has a lane first down out to the 15-yard line. Jorgensen tripped him up. Here's the drive chart. For Georgia Tech, the last five possessions, and it's not pretty. You see it there. A challenge for Georgia Tech to get any any amount of rhythm really established, not only because of the three and outs, but you look at that field position. That's not very good field position. Only one time on their own 45, and they turn it over on downs. It's Broderick Snotty with his first touch. The number three B back, which is essentially a fullback in this triple option attack. He's a sophomore out of Carrollton, Georgia. Second down and five. Call it second and four. A couple of runs to Cal Van Noy's side. Georgia Tech, one of the elements, they got a chop block for this earlier. But they got to do a good job of getting defenders on the ground, getting cut blocks at the point of attack. Out of that diamond formation. A pickup of a yard for Georgia Tech now third and three and right on cue right at the point of attack this time it was Spencer Hadley that they were attempting to cut down he plays the block off with his hands and is able to get in on the tackle well, Hadley in his first game back coming off of a suspension and he's made his presence felt with a sack and now a couple of tackles over three here in the half End around. Here comes Michael Summers, and he's got the first down out near the 30-yard line. They had to resort to a trick play, essentially, to pick it up, but it worked. That's two third downs that they needed to pick up and did off of the lousy field position they were handed. And Robinson Davidson, I mean, Robinson Daniel, rather. Well, if he is not there, otherwise, Summers is taking it all the way to the house. You can see already third down has been much friendlier to Georgia Tech, and they've had to overcome adversity. First third down conversion of the half. Lee looking for room up the middle, none. Bronson Kalfusi brings him down for a loss of two. Kalfusi played for the BYU basketball team last year. He's a pretty good football player, too. That's such a big challenge. Well, Georgia Tech, we just talked about it. They get conversions. You know, they've had an average of third and nine. Part of that is because of the play of this BYU defense on early downs and negative yardage plays sets you off schedule offensively. Kalfusi's dad, Steve, is the D-line coach. Second and 12. Bobbled and incomplete. DeAndre Smelter couldn't haul it in. Sky Pove was there. Third drop tonight. 
important the Georgia Tech receivers. Well, badly gets the ball out there, but it's high. And you know, it's still a catchable ball. Sky Pove was very loose in his coverage. There was opportunity to complete that ball. As it is, Povey enough time to get over there because the ball was so elevated. You made the point earlier that Georgia Tech was having a lot of third and shorts in this game. Well, now it's kind of gone the other way. Here's a third and long again. Lee being chased. Here comes Van Oy. Can't get him. Off balance. Got it downfield. Did he get it? No, incomplete. Sinjin Days. Made a great effort to bring that in. It's fourth down. Yeah, once again, we touched on this a little bit earlier. Spencer Hadley was the one that got back there first from his outside linebacker position and flushed him towards Kyle Van Noy. But Vad Lee, you talk about a hard ball. That ball just bounced off the turf. But again, you know, Vad Lee able to throw it on the mark. It's hard to roll to your left. When you're a right-handed quarterback, and he was very much off balance when he delivered that pass. A rugby style for Sean Poole, the punter. False left inside the 20. Hit, spins away, and gets out to the 19. Good coverage by Georgia Tech. It's a 52-yard punt, and there are penalty flags all over. Looks like it's going to be a face mask call. Yeah, you could see it right there with the hands right into the face mask. DJ White, he got all up in there too, man. He made it count. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, kicking team. Penalty will be 15 yards, tacked on to the end of the run. BYU football, first down. More college football on the U later tonight. From the Pac-12, Oregon State, Washington State, 10:30 Eastern Time on ESPN. You also live on Watch ESPN. You and I saw the air raid of Washington State in Week One, and Mike Leach has done some pretty good things there in Year Two at the Cougars. As Taysom Hill is bottled up by Adam Gatsis. Gatsis and Francis Callen. There's Jimmy Kitchen in there as well. They've all been rotating in at nose tackle tonight for Georgia Tech. Ted Roof moving a lot of pieces around in this game. Second and 11. Hill fires to the outside and it's incomplete. Intended for Mitch Matthews, who's been a lot more quiet tonight than he was last week against Utah State with those three touchdowns. You know, and so far this half. Georgia Tech has to be very pleased with how this defensive unit has tightened up after leaking yards, specifically in the in the passing game. The BYU has gone to the run on early downs. They were throwing it on early downs in the first half. But now we see once again they're having to resort to the pass in third and long situations. Hill throws it short. Caught by false lab. He's immediately hit by Lewis Young. And BYU will have to kick. Second straight three and out for the Cougars. And Bronco Mendenhall's offense has dried up here all of a sudden. Georgia Tech, though, hasn't been able to do anything with it. Tech has really struggled to be able to, to capitalize on both of these offenses. And this, this entire half, you know, one of the things that defenses are able to do during a halftime is make adjustments. Oh, and blocked. Takes a BYU roll to the 46-yard line. Chris Milton got in there to get a hand on it. Number six. And it's just a 19-yard punt for Arlano. You see this style of protection. And Chris Milton, he was able to just get all the way upfield. And the shield player was not able to get over there, Kyle Johnson. Seam number 67 just doesn't get enough of Milton, and he gets all the way upfield and gets a hand on that punt. Going to the air is Vad Lee on first down. Caught, got high, inside the 20. Well, the run game is not working for Georgia Tech. 
maybe the passing attack is the answer. You know, it really seems like that's been the case almost all night long, Clay. You know, they haven't completed a lot of passes, but when they have, they've either been on a third down or for a big hit. And this is reminiscent of the big pass to Summers in the first quarter of the ball game. It might be enough to break this offensive log jam. 37-yard strike. Inside handoff to Lasky. And the 6'1", 214-pounder will pull his way to the 11-and-a-half-yard line, second down with 35 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Paul Johnson's running game averaging 300 yards per contest isn't even to the halfway point tonight. Lee runs away from his options and right into trouble. There's Hadley again, and Unga as well. It's a loss of three. And that does it for the third. But Georgia Tech's in the red zone. They've got a third down coming up when we start the fourth. Beautiful night, homecoming night on this Saturday in Provo, Utah. And the Cougars lead it 24-13 going to the fourth. Back at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. One of the prettiest settings in college football as we begin the fourth quarter, 24-13. BYU leading Georgia Tech, both teams three and two. Look at the game trends tonight. Georgia Tech and BYU both known for their rushing attacks, but it's been a passing story tonight. BYU has done a great job through the air. Well, and you can see Georgia Tech really slowed in their rushing game, you know, less than half of what they're typically used to producing. BYU's done an excellent job of bottling them up, really. And they've got one 20-plus yard play on the ground. Everything else has come on the arm of Vad Lee. And he's done it in crucial moments, converting third downs. That was something Bronco Mendenhall was lamenting about his defense. He was getting them behind in the down and distance, much like they are here, a third and long and yet somehow badly completing passes. Third and eight from the 15 to start the fourth quarter. A score would make it a one possession game. Either a field goal or a touchdown. Lee pressured, hit by Van Orn. That's why he's an All-American. It's a loss of 13, making this a much more difficult field goal attempt. I don't, I don't know how this happens. Van Noy is unaccounted for yet again in the protection scheme. Now you could see the A-back looked like it was Sims in that instance. Couldn't quite tell as he was scatting out. And Van Noy just blitzes. And he's unaccounted for from the blind side of Vad Lee. Officially a loss of 10. So instead of a 32-yard attempt, a 42-yard attempt. Might be delay a game. No, a timeout. Timeout called for by Paul Johnson. There was no play before the snap. Timeout, Georgia Tech. We saw Paul Johnson get a timeout last week just ahead of the play clock expiring in the game against Miami. But Kyle Van Oy, the big sack of Vad Lee moments ago. See, Van Noy, you better have somebody accounting for him. He's one of the best sack artists in college football, and he's on top of Vad Lee again. Well, this is going to be a 42-yard attempt for Harrison Butker. Paul Johnson had to burn a timeout because field goal unit didn't have enough men on the field. After the sack by Van Noy, this makes it a 42-yard attempt. Butker is 2 for 2, 37 and 44 already made tonight. No. Off to the left, and it stays a two-possession game. BYU leading 24-13, just over 14 minutes to go. 
Celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Gold Nets, Allstate making contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship money. Didn't hit the net that time. Still no points in the second half for either team. And now Taysom Hill is punished at the 14-yard line by Adam Gotsis, quietly having a really good game. Well, Gotsis has done a great job in the middle of this defensive front. You see him right here. He's working on Fusi at center, who's been pressed into service due to injury. And this is complete to Williams out of the backfield. And Paul Davis corrals him for a gain of six, but still well short of the original line of scrimmage. So as good to bring as, up third and long. So as good as BYU was in the first half, Clay, on first and second down, they've been just as bad on first down, especially here in the second half. Third and 14, pressure off the edge, hit is Hill, ball is loose. Are they going to rule that live or incomplete? It's a live ball, I believe. And BYU has recovered. Brandon Watts, the Sam linebacker, knocked it out of the hands of Taysom Hill as he was going back to throw. And BYU can't punt this ball away fast enough. Now, I don't know. It looks to me like I don't know if that ball was going forward when Watts knocked it out of Taysom Hill's hand. Of course, he had that throw in motion where his arm went forward, but I don't, I don't know if the ball was still in his hand when his arm went forward. I think they're, they're going to take another look at it. The replay officials out of the Big 12 want to Throwing take another look the at it. Throwing on the field was a fumble recovered by BYU. That play is under further review. And Taysom Hill is bleeding from the mouth pretty good. That's from that first down shot that Taysom Hill took. You see Watts. No, I think that ball was coming forward. It's an incomplete pass. Which will give the punting unit a more breathing room. Yeah, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a possession concern as much as it is a spotting of the ball. And now that we've seen it again, I think that ball's definitely coming forward when Watts knocks, knocks it loose there. But I think where Hill either got his chin or his mouth bloodied was on that first down shot that he took from Gotsis and company. Now, if it's ruled an incomplete pass, it's going to make the difference of about seven yards. Right now, it's spotted at the 13-yard line. Seven yards can be a big deal. Punting has been kind of an adventure tonight, especially for BYU. They'll take that seven yards. That could be an important seven yards. You come down to this field position battle that is kind of what this entire half has been defined yeah. by. The third quarter was nothing but jockeying for a position. And Georgia Tech finally gets a big shot to God high, only to come up empty after a missed field goal. BYU this half. Five possessions, five punts. This will be their fifth punt. As they uh, continue to work on the lip of Taysom Hill. Riley Johnson, our referee tonight from the ACC, waiting for word. Big 12 replay official Judson Howard. You know, Bronco Mendenhall. We were meeting with him yesterday, and we've touched on it a little bit. He takes this games like this as a, as a, a season within a season. And as we look at the ball right there on the, on the sideline, we're saying BYU recovered this ball. Michael Yek, number 77, tackle. Was given credit for recovering that football. How did he come up with that football? I don't know. It's hard to tell from that angle, but he apparently did. Here comes the word from upstairs. After review, the ruling on the field stands fourth down. That means they couldn't find any video evidence, to, evidence of otherwise, so the play on the field 
the way it was called stands. It wasn't confirmed, it just stands. Yeah, I mean, if you can't overturn it, and it has to be clear. And, you know, the way the re replay officials saw it, it wasn't enough to overturn what was called down there on the field. Regardless, it's, it's a seven-yard difference. The possession remains the same. Low snap to Arlano. Good kick. He was due for one. Backs off the return man, Smelter. And he gets it across the 35. It was a 56-yard punt for Arlano. Well, Kyle Van Oy has two sacks tonight. BYU as a team has three. He's been a pretty good show. Kyle Van Noy, one of the best linebackers in the country. He can take over a game, starting to do that in this one. Last week, on the very first defensive play for BYU against Utah State, had a pick six to set the tempo. Big sack on the last Georgia Tech series as they get it back on offense. And it's Zach Lasky ahead for the Yellow Jackets for three yards. Well, Kyle Van Noy, he was hit on it. One of the most explosive game-changing talents that you'll see in college football. And he doesn't need any help. You know, he can beat a block. But on several occasions, right there, you know, two of those he was unaccounted for. The third they were trying, they just didn't get to him in time. It's off the field right now at second and seven. Vad Lee pitches it out to the A-back. Charles Perkins. He's folded in half after a gain of six. It's third down now for Georgia Tech. On their five possessions here in the half, three punts, they turned it over on downs, and a missed 42-yard field goal. You could see it, and it was a fourth and short that Paul Johnson went for so far tonight, or at least up until that point. They enjoyed 100% success in those down and distance. But BYU has found ways to get key stops. First down, Lasky. Nick Howell is officially the defensive coordinator for BYU, but Bronco Mendenhall has been calling the plays this year. He's been his defensive coordinator most of his time here at BYU. It's that 3-4 defense. Van Noy, he gets a lot of the attention. He's the face of the defense, but they've got good players all around. Well, we talked about it. Marcus Johnson stepping up for... Losing Ethan, Mani Mariana. Throwing on first down, intercepted. Arani four. All the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars. First turnover of the game for either team. A pick and a 50-yard return to the house for Fool. He's one of those guys I was alluding to. Oh, Fool is in there in relief of Van Noy. Van Noy was on the sideline. We're talking about maybe he'd injured his hand. Fool doing a pretty good Van Noy impersonation. Now, now there's a penalty flag. We'll see uh, this doesn't Come all the way back. Uh, I think it's going to end up being an excessive celebration. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a celebration penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the scoring team, BYU. Players coming off the bench after a score. That 15 yard penalty will be administered on the kickoff. It's probably one that Bronco Mendenhall will forgive fairly easily. Yeah, I think he'll see past that one. Look real closely. Well, Fua does a great job. Vad Lee, he could have used the sideline as a defender to knock Fua out. He was unable to do it. And it's 31 to 13. Alani Fua came into fall camp without a starting job. He earned it. 
during August workouts. And he's been a starter since the season opener. He takes this one back 50 yards to extend BYU's lead on homecoming night, 31 to 13. Time now for your AT&T All-America Player of the Week, Terry Baggett of Army. Rushed for a school record 304 yards on only 18 carries. For only 18 carries as he breaks a school record for Army rushing yards. Text VOTE to 34763 to vote. Use your mobile phone. All right, Matt. Back here in Provo, it's now 31-13 after the interception return for a touchdown by Alani Fua. First points of the second half. Well, you see Georgia Tech, that's going to be nightmarish. Last week, they're an extra point away from tying the ball game in the fourth quarter versus Miami. And then the floodgates open, and partly due to an interception return for touchdown. We might see a new quarterback in there for Georgia Tech. We saw Justin Thomas warming up on the sideline. Four interceptions and two fumbles in the last three games for Brad Lee. It's going to be a touchback. Georgia Tech will start at the 25. ESPNU's coverage of women's college volleyball continues. With action tomorrow. Central Florida and Louisville, 1 o'clock Eastern. On the U, also live on Watch ESPN. And indeed, it will be Justin Thomas, the redshirt freshman quarterback from Prattville, Alabama. Had one play back in the first half when Vad Lee lost his helmet and had to come out for a play. Originally committed to Alabama, but they wanted him as a defensive back. Georgia said, you can play quarterback here. So he came to Atlanta. He'll start this series first and 10, pulls the ball away and keeps it. Only picks up a yard, second down and nine. Can't say enough about the way BYU has played between the tackles. And, and really, they've done an excellent job on the perimeter as well. And we've already touched on, really, the offense that Georgia Tech has been able to generate, specifically from a big play standpoint, has been in the passing game. And uh, with that lead out of the ball game, makes it all the more difficult, I think, given the fact they have not been able to establish this run game inside or there's 144 rushing yards tonight for Georgia Tech. They average 300. Thomas, another keeper, goes airborne, and Alani Fua had that pick just moments ago brings him down for a gain of seven. And that's the telling statistic tonight. You know, a year ago, BYU did a great job, held Georgia Tech to their season low, 117 rushing yards. So far tonight, we're kind of duplicating that effort. Virginia Tech did a great job as well earlier this season. Third and two. First down, David Sims, who has been very quiet tonight. That's a gain of three for Sims. Just his fifth. Carry tonight. It's a three possession game. Uphill climb for Georgia Tech as the backup quarterback is in. Catch. Nice move after the catch by Waller. And it's going to be a Georgia Tech first down. The run defense, though, has been a pretty good story for BYU. They've strung out on the option pitches to the perimeter. And when the B-back, or even badly, tried to keep it for inside runs, they were met with great resistance by a BYU defense that is more than prepared to face this offense. And a difficult one at that, because they don't see it that often and probably won't see it again this year. Thomas pitches out. Got high, turns it upfield, and it's another first down out to the 41 yard line. Blake Morgan and Spencer Hadley credited with the tackle, but it's a gain of 11. 
to the 41. Well, that time, though, what sprung this? Look at the block out wide. Didn't getting players on the ground. Daniel Sorensen in that instance. You know, sometimes that's what it takes to spring a longer run. Thomas. Singen days. It wasn't a pretty pitch, but he's able to handle it and pick up five. You know, we, we talk about Georgia Tech and how they have long sustained drives. That's what they're known for, but they need to start scoring quickly. Yeah, I mean, you can see now a couple of successful runs to the perimeter. It requires good blocking not only in the box, but good reads at the quarterback position and blocking at the re wide receiver position as well to allow that pitch man to field the pitch cleanly and get upfield. Encroachment, number 53 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Ryan Chamberlain, the tackle, the youngest starter on the offensive line. He hasn't been penalized yet tonight, so he takes his turn. Yeah, uh, you know, we've seen a couple of false starts. We've got, seen several false starts in this ball game. This time, though, you know, it ends up being, it's hard to see it, but see, Chamberlain, he was lined so far upfield, he was in the neutral zone. I'm not going to let you do that, man. You don't get a head start like that. Spinning away from a tackle is Thomas. Stays on his feet. And pushed hard out of bounds. No penalty flags. Wani Unga shoved him out. It's a gain of one, and it'll bring up third down and fairly long for Georgia Tech. And it was Ethan Manimaliuna who was the one that got pressure early on and we've seen that inside out BYU has played very well tonight not only gets the run but also in the pass pressure and you see Unga oh, nothing to see there yeah. well, I mean it's just it was not as, as violent as I think the ending of that play appeared so now third and nine and Georgia Tech desperately needs to convert here they need the 31 and a timeout Georgia Tech they have one remaining so we're under seven minutes to go here in Provo, Utah, and it's 31-13. Paul Johnson and the Yellow Jackets offense talk it over. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by New Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. Available for a limited time. Get yours now. Time now for your AT&T All-America Player of the Week. How about a nomination for Case McCoy, the Texas senior quarterback, goes 13 of 21, 190 yards, and two touchdowns in the 36 to 20 upset win over number 12 Oklahoma, stemming the tide in that Red River rivalry. Use your mobile phone. Text vote to 34763 to vote. Mac Brown probably kissed Case McCoy right on the forehead after that game. Yeah, he's kissed. I uh, probably he's kissed the McCoy family members a couple of times, <laughs> with his brother Colt enjoying a lot of success. How about a two defensive tackles running the ball in for a score in that ball game? That's a wacky game. Now Georgia Tech needs to pick up a third down. Convert a third down. A third and nine. They try to run for it, and David Sims lost the football. And BYU has it. Robertson Daniel knocked it loose, and the Cougars recover. The second Georgia Tech turnover here in the half. And Paul Johnson, well, all you can do is just shake your head. You know, they had to go to the air. Certainly more than they're typically comfortable with. We touched on it only. They're averaging 16 passes a game, but here on the ground game, and this is David Sims finally getting something going in the rushing attack. And Robinson Daniel just gets his hat right on the football. It pops out. And it's recovered by Spencer Hadley, who has played a great football game here tonight coming off suspension. Suspended the last three games for a violation of the honor code. 
There's a two yard pickup for Williams. David Sims is getting downhill and Wani Unga diving in his legs before Robertson Daniel got there. Sometimes that hat just gets right on the football. Either way, well, that's something that Georgia Tech is, well, they get a lot of those. You know, they lose a lot of them coming into this game. They had 11 fumbles and only lost three of them. Make that 12 fumbles, losing four now. That's eight turnovers in the last two plus games for Georgia Tech. Williams, no game. Third down, BYU as we go inside six minutes. Well, the second half, you know, really this team in general, Bronco, Bronco Mendenhall leaning on the strength of a team carrying over from last year, that being the defense. It's the number three defense in the country last year. And one of the reasons why BYU felt like they could make this change offensively was because the defense would afford them that luxury. That, you know, they take their growing pains, they take their lumps, knowing that they're transitioning in philosophy. In this entire second half, they've been much, much more conservative. They've been much more ground game oriented than they were in the first. Williams, a big gap up the middle, first down into Georgia Tech territory. Down to the 33-yard line. Not only does he pick up the first down, he rips off 34 against the Georgia Tech defense. Well, he can run the football and still rip off some big plays. Watch Paul Lasique. He's going to come over, and he's going to seal out. Watch this, the end player. So here's Brandon Watts coming off the edge. Great kick out block, just enough. Jamal Williams gets up into the line of scrimmage clean and is out in the secondary. His longest run of the night, 17 carries, 86 yards, and a touchdown. It was one of the reasons that BYU ran all over Texas in week two. Hill, the keeper. And he's got the first down. DJ White finally gets him out, but it's another 11 yard pickup for this offense. Well, Clay, I'm a little surprised we haven't seen more of BYU in this formation. They call it the diamond formation. And they had a lot of success versus Utah State last, last week. A lot of teams running it. Georgia Tech runs this yeah. formation. This is like the formation of the year. Robert and I, he's, he has really evolved this offense. I mean, just in the course of a week, he's got to be pleased with where they are in the growth of what he wants to do. We'll run that play clock inside of five. As LG Brown gets a touch, picks up seven. They're not going to be running plays every 19 seconds now. The clock is their friend. They'll burn the play clock, leading 31-13. Georgia Tech's defense giving up yards here, but otherwise, they've given up about, what, 21 yards this entire half? Yeah. They went in at halftime. They knew they had some yard, uh, some defensive adjustments that needed to be made. They made them. I mean, they slowed BYU way down. A part of that is BYU changing things and going more to the ground game. The Ted Roof's unit, they just didn't start fast enough here tonight. Second and three, first down, Brown, touchdown. Algie Brown from 15 yards out. And that's the haymaker for BYU. You see the Georgia Tech players looking around. You know, this time, you know, they got guys in position to make a play, unable to make a, make a tackle at the point of attack. And the extra point for Sorensen. Six plays, 69 yards, three and a half minutes. Off the turnover, BYU cashes in. Watch Riker Matthews. He's going to pull and kick out right here in the edge. And that's just enough. We've seen two good kickouts. Nice seal block there by Brandon on Brandon Watts again. Coming up into the backfield. But he's accounted for. That team by uh, Kane Friel does a good job. And once again, you see BYU from an assignment standpoint tonight, they looked a lot cleaner. That was an issue last week. Utah State kind of junked them up, gave them a lot of crazy looks. But this time, you know, they stuck to the ground, wanted to milk clock, something that they're not usually geared towards. 
They got a big run and they finally punched it in for a score. That was scheduled the toughest in BYU's history according to the coaching staff. We'll be at Houston next week. Houston undefeated. when they host Boise before trips to Wisconsin and Notre Dame in November. This is going to be a nice mid-season win against Georgia Tech to get him to four and two. This is the game where you close out the first half of your season on a positive note and you gain some momentum heading into that second half as you push towards bowl eligibility. Obviously BYU no conference to win no division to win. They're an independent. The Bronco Mendenhall said this is the toughest schedule they've ever faced here at BYU and that's not going to change. He's looking to challenge this program every year with the opposition that they schedule. When Griffin fumbles it in the end zone, touchback. Let's go to Matt Schick for a promo of what's coming up next. All right, thanks, Clay. Coming up after this one, a key Pac-12 matchup. You see Mike Riley and Mike Leach. Oregon State, Washington State coming up right after this here on ESPN. You guys. All right, 311 to go here in Provo, 38-13. You mentioned the uh, the independent status of BYU. It's the third year as an independent program after more than a decade in the Mountain West and 36 years in the WAC before that. I think Bronco Mendenhall, another thing that he relishes is being an independent program. They've got a lot of latitude with that. Caught and out of bounds, the receiver Robert Godhigh, a gain of nine. Stops the clock with 3.05 to go. Yeah, you know, in visiting with Bronco, Bronco Mendenhall, he's like, it takes two things. You know, one of us wants, you know, the conference got to want you, but they got to want you for who you are. They're not going to play sports on Sunday at BYU. That's just a yep. non-negotiable. And for some conferences, that's a deal breaker. And Bronco Mendenhall says, fine, they're, they're not going to waver uh, from their, their morals. You know, they've got a strong mooring in that. Justin Thomas, no gain. He came in on the last series. Vad Lee has been benched for Georgia Tech. And BYU hopes that with the start of the college football playoff format next year, that being an independent will benefit them even more. Well, you know, right now you got this, this automatic qualifying status that exists for conferences. And I'm not a member of the conference. Big hole up the middle. And going all the way to the end zone. And he's going to be stopped inside the 15-yard line. It's Matt Connors. Not even listed on the depth chart getting a carry. And that's going to frustrate this defense. That's done a great job of slowing down Georgia Tech on the ground. That run alone is going to skew what has otherwise been an excellent effort by BYU versus a prolific rushing attack of Georgia Tech. 55 yard run for Connors. Thomas keeps and gets to the five. Oregon State. Washington State ready to come your way. 10.30 Eastern here on ESPN. U Cal and UCLA on ESPN2. Again, the big news out of the pack. 12 today is number five Stanford. Upset by Utah. Maybe a hangover game after a closely fought ball game versus Washington a week ago. Clearly Oregon separating themselves as the lead team in that conference. Thomas throws. It's caught. Did he stay in the end zone? Yes, it's a touchdown for Georgia Tech. Deion Hill. From Justin Thomas from five yards out, they score with under a minute to go here in the fourth. You credit Georgia Tech for continuing to fight. Well, on the previous possession, you know, Justin Thomas did a good job moving the offense. Were not for a David Sims fumble, they were moving into at least scoring position and now able to complete a drive after the big long run by Connor. Extra point by Butker to make it 38 to 20. And Georgia Tech 
They've obviously got some issues. Rough night on offense again. A lot of penalties. And a tough time with Taysom Hill and the BYU offense. The schedule. They host Syracuse next. They also draw Clemson. They close the season with Georgia. They do miss Florida State out of the ACC. Their bowl streak of 16 straight years, which is a school record, is on the line this season. Do you see three more wins in there? Yeah, that's the real catch, right? You know, Syracuse won today. You know, with the challenges that Georgia Tech has faced on defense, and, and keeping in mind that they did play much better here in the second half, that said, it wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough for four quarters. You see it with a damn kind of broke versus Miami late in the ball game last week. And here tonight, you know, the first half where BYU effectively had their way with Georgia Tech coming out throwing, which is kind of counter to what that offense has shown this season. But the idea that you've got a Clemson team, that, you know, they survived a scare versus Boston College, but an incredibly talented one at that. They've got two division games left, but a three game slide has certainly got to have the Jackets nervous towards getting towards bowl eligibility. They backdoored their way into the yeah. bowl eligibility a season ago. Represented the Coastal Division in the ACC Championship game last year, which they lost to Florida State. Hine stays on his feet. Good return out to the 37-yard line. He would easily be leading the nation in kickoff return yards, but three of his returns have been called back this year on penalties, including a touchdown. 32 yards on that return. 46 seconds to go. And Taysom Hill. What a night for the BYU quarterback. Even though he's got a cut on his lip that's pretty deep, he's going to be all smiles after this game. Yeah, that'll be a, a nasty souvenir from what was other, otherwise an excellent performance by the BYU quarterback. And you could see him not only growing up in that position, but also in this offense. And you can see a BYU offense now that after starting off the season, when you want to run a bunch of plays fast, you got to develop the base. That was the run game. It was a quarterback-oriented run game. But tonight, they really took the next step throwing the football. Ammon Olsen taking a knee. That's going to do it. Bronco Mendenhall coming across the field to shake Paul Johnson's hand. A Wrangler five-star player of the game. BYU quarterback Taysom Hill. 244 yards through the air and a touchdown, 65 rushing yards and a touchdown. 38-20, the final BYU goes to four and two. Georgia Tech dropping to three and three. For Matt Stinchcomb and Don Davenport on Clay Mathic, thanks for joining us. It's a homecoming win for the Cougars. Now we send it to SportsCenter U and Matt Schick. All right, thank you, Clay. BYU gets the win over Georgia Tech, and we've only begun to fight here on EA.